Okay. So what's with the word, with letter K? But what's with the weird spelling of the word for T? We're not talking about potassium. We're not talking about special K. We're talking about the German spelling of the word for T. Uh, I stole this definition from an article about debate. 1996, I think that's a pretty good definition of what critique means. Uh, I'm just going to read it out loud because I think it does a pretty good job. Uh, as opposed to disadvantages, uh, counterplans, other kinds of arguments you could read, it is a form of, of attack that attempts to redirect the focus of debate to whether or not to reject ideas which support or uphold undesirable ideology, language, institutions, or worldviews. Uh, so, you can see how that's a little bit different from a disadvantage, uh, a little bit different from a uh, counterplan, uh, but in, in the same way, it has, uh, it's similar, it's, it's, instead, of critique, instead of attacking the results of the plan, whether the plan is a good idea, uh, just the consequences of it, it's so whether some of the other things that are kind of maybe hidden, it's not just like, does the plan do something bad, does the plan uphold something bad, does the app use language that is bad. Uh, so it, it, it involves more things than just, you know, the plan spends money, that's bad. Uh, the plan angers, uh, you know, the plan helps, you know, time wins democracy, uh, things like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so this, like I said, is review for people. Uh, we don't have a big group. Um, if you have questions, just raise your hand. And, or if you have questions at the end, certainly I can answer those then. Parts of the critique. Um, again, I, as I said, this is uh, while this is different from a disadvantage and, uh, or a counterplan, it kind of has elements of both. Uh, so the parts of the critique that you might see if you were to open up a file and look at what is in the Y and C, you'll probably see three parts. They may not be labeled like this, and as I'm about to show an example, uh, they often aren't, but they usually have three parts. The link which is, what did the app do? Uh, that's, you know, just like this advantage, it's, you know, just what, what the plan do. It's a little bit broader, it might just be more about the affirmative in general, it might be, like I said, about, more about the language, or about assumptions that the affirmative has made. But yeah, it's what did the affirmative team do that uh, the negative team is criticizing. Uh, the next part of that, why do we, why do we care about that? So, uh, what is that, you know, that thing that the affirmative did, why is that a bad thing? It's just an impact. The impact, you sometimes might say implication. I say implication, that's the same thing as an impact. It's, you just, it's like an impact. The way this is you know, different from a uh, disadvantage kind of comes here. There's the next part, which is the alternative, which is kind of similar in some ways to a counter plan, which I think you all learned about last night in the seminars. But a counter plan, which is a, a, a counter proposal, to the affirmative, most of the time those are, you know, those are, like, you know, they are literally counter plans. Something either the United States federal government or another actor should do, like a policy proposal. The alternative might not be a policy proposal. In fact, oftentimes it's not. Uh, it is, uh, you know, something like an activist should do, or something that we as debaters should do. Uh, we as debaters, I've been debated for a while. But uh, people in the debate community, judge the judge, the debaters, something that should be done or maybe something that we should, you know, we as a people, as, as you know, people in the country or people of the world should align ourselves with. So it can be very specific, it can be very broad, um, but it's definitely different than a counter plan because it's not usually, you can't really, you know, narrow it down to one thing. It's usually more of a theory than it is just, uh, you know, just, you know, a counter proposal. So I'm going to show some examples. And if you have questions after that, I can maybe answer some questions about that. So. Uh, example of a uh, link, uh, definitely, oh yeah, I've got the highlighting for a little bit. This is from the security K file that is um, on the uh, SDI Dropbox on the SDI website. If you haven't seen that yet, hopefully you've taken a look at some of the files. But the link is kind of in the first part of this card. Uh, you, you might notice it's not labeled as link, um, but the first part of this tag uh, is a link argument. What do the affirmative do bad? Well, the affirmative maintains a politics of American exceptionalism by constructing China as a threat to the American like global order. Now, I don't know, sometimes this is pretty common with critiques. Maybe you don't know what some of these what words mean. You know, I, I think these are important uh, terms to learn, especially for an international topic like this one. 
the idea of American exceptionalism. Does anyone know what that means? American exceptionalism? The idea that America is like an exception, or like particularly the U.S. is exceptionally is like better than. Yeah, yeah, sure. The, the, the idea that the, um, the you know, America kind of you know, knows what's right uh, by constructing China as a threat. So by constructing China as a threat, what, what does it mean? You know, what do you think that means to construct them as a threat? Someone else to. Um, maybe like putting them in a position that they're a threat, like, for example, telling, um, early big news about this time on. Right. So, but, you know, you know, so they might, they, you know, what is it, it's like a threat. It's like, um, like, um, it's like, okay, it's like, so, like socializing people to view China as a threat. Yeah, so it, it, it's not it's not a certain thing. It's not they are not an objective threat like as something that anyone can see. You're constructing as a threat. You are trying, you're painting a picture that they are a threat. Yeah, that, I think that everyone has answered that correctly. I just wanted to kind of get that you know what what that meant. That is what the affirmative has done that. They have said they have come into the one AC and they have made the argument that China's a threat and the United States, the exceptional United States, is the one who has to do something about it. Right, so that is the link argument. Uh, in this case, the same piece of evidence is the link and the impact. The second half of that, that tag is the implication. Their politics cement China as an uncivilized other and create the possibility for all forms of an imperial domination. Ooh, that's bad. Um, so, you know, their politics cement China as an uncivilized other. So, why does uh, we have before. Why does constructing them as a threat? Well, how does that create them? Uh, cement them as uncivilized other? Does everyone have kind of an idea of? Well, obviously, there's evidence in here. Well, it's like a, it's kind of like us, the mentality, and that yeah. can turn into like just insulting their. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I think this is a pretty basic example. So you can say, you know, we're going to. You know, the affirmative approach is saying the United States is best, China is a threat, we know what's, what's up, China does not. So they, they, they are less civilized. Uh, and I think that it's kind of clear how that can cause, you know, how they can cause domination. Uh, if, one per, if one people is better than the other people, then it's easier to dehumanize them and to, and to think of them as someone that needs to be controlled. So I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, and as the piece of evidence goes much more in depth than this, I just kind of wanted to show the tag so you can see where these things are found in the evidence. <coughs> and then the alternative. It, often the alternative is actually uh, you know, mentioned, the word alternative is mentioned, but sometimes it's not. But it's usually when you see an action phrase or something like that in the piece of evidence. So in this case, the alternative is to interrogate the ontological presumptions at the heart of security. So that's a lot of words. Um, that's a lot of, you know, what, does anyone you know, have an idea of, has anyone ever heard the word ontology before? Um, it's like the study of being, so something mm -hmm. that's kind of like a date to result that is. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that, that's, it's just not perfect, yeah. So ontology is the study of, of being, of like the essence of something. Uh, so uh, the alternative, it's not to do a plan. It's not to uh, necessarily sell arms. It's, uh, if you want to take a stance on that, but it's, it's instead of that, we should interrogate or you know, kind of think about the ontological presumptions. So, the uh, you know what are what are the assumptions that we're making about uh, you know the fundamental essence of security. So uh, we should, you know, those assumptions we made about China being inherently uh, uncivilized or violent, those things are something we should interrogate. Before we decide whether or not we can sell arms to Taiwan, we should, we should think about how our, uh, by, uh, our, like, you know, the United States, or our as, like, you know, the affirmative approach. We should think about the, you know, the, our, the, the approach toward China and toward the other before we think about whether or not uh, arms sales are important. So uh, this is kind of, you know, instead of doing a plan, we should do that first. And then uh, the, the rest of the uh, tag, you know, is, it kind of explains why that's important. 
But also, you might say this is another impact, too. It kind of talks again about the authorization and you know, policy failure. Uh, you know, that, that might be important because it means that not only is the alternative a good idea, but maybe the plan is a bad idea because it's, uh, you know, talking about how reform fails because if we don't question American values, then when, you know, the just doing little changes like the plan are not going to succeed. So that's kind of the you know, tricky argument the negative team could make about why the critique isn't just about why the plan is bad or why the app is bad, but it's also why the app fails to do what it tries to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, like it, it's like you know why the negative is saying all of these things. So they're not just presenting a problem. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the problems that you know they're criticizing might exist already in the status quo. That is one thing that the critique lacks that I, I just said has to have is uniqueness. So of course the affirmative might treat China like that, but so does that you know, the status quo. Of course, you know the president you know, says that China's a threat. It's like our, our major uh, competitor. Uh, so of course there's you know a, a construction of China as uncivilized and a threat right now, but this is uh, the, the important part is the uh, maybe was offering an alternative to that that can not only solve their link argument but maybe solve the root cause of these things. So that's why the uh, negative reads an alternative. So this is kind of what, what the negative has done to introduce the criticism. They, you know, they don't have a question kind of like what, why this like why this happens or you know uh, what the negative why the negative does this. Okay. Where I'm going to go before the affirmative. This, I kind of limited amount of time to talk about a very complex thing, as you'll see in a lot of these areas. So I want to make sure I cover all the basics and then fill in with, uh, with specifics and definitely answer the questions. So um, the affirmative approach to answering the critique. Uh, um, the you know this is I think the, the basic uh, way that I was taught how to answer critiques. Um, is using the acronym POSTAL, um, uh, you know, for standards, as you can see there, for permutation, offense, solvency, theory, slash framework, alternative, and link. Um, you might also see F POSTAL, where it kind of moves the framework part to the beginning. I don't know. I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. I, that's not a word, so I just assume, you know, just use, use, uh, use POSTAL. And just remember that th by theory, you also, you know, that includes kind of, you know, the theory about debate. And I'll, I'll get to what all these terms mean. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory, some of them are not. Um, but I think that's a good acronym to remember when you are, <coughs> um, maybe when you are before the tournament and you know you have to write uh, answers to a criticism, critique, criticism, mean the same thing. <coughs> and you can see you have to write the answer to that. You should look at your block and say, hey, do I have all of these things? Uh, and if you don't, you should maybe reevaluate your block. Or maybe you are debating a team and you hear a new critique you've never heard before. You should think, hey, maybe I can make sure I say all these things, partner, you know, during, the two, you know, during the 2AC. Uh, if I don't say this, maybe say, hey, you know, make a theory argument. Or, hey, uh, you know, make a link argument. Uh, that way, just you make sure you cover all your bases and you are good. Yeah. So, it's the same thing. It's just the same. Yeah. So yeah, if you yeah, I mean, if you've heard F postal before, that's the same thing. Uh, the only it, it just kind of emphasizes the framework part, and, and I, I, I agree with that. That's definitely important too. I just think that uh, uh, it's interesting um, that like it, it might, I might be harder to remember that because like F postal is a word. F postal is like you might forget why it's there. I don't know. It, it's, if it makes sense to you, that's great, uh, and that's really all that matters. But we're going to go into what all those things mean. Permutation. Uh, hopefully, we're talking about uh, counterplans last night. Maybe we talked a little bit about what a permutation is. So, a permutation is a you know, way to combine uh, the plan text and the alternative in a way that might resolve both the harms of the affirmative and the negative link arguments and the implications that come from those link arguments. So. Um, for example, can, can someone think of maybe how that might apply to that security criticism that we have talked about? Maybe, like, let's say, let's say the app is to get rid of our to Taiwan. How can we maybe do both of those things? Can you, anyone think of a way, you know, make that? I mean, that, that, that is, oh. Like, run, only run the relation is advantage, and then you kind of say, like, 
Sure, sure. Well, let's, let's, say, let's say you read both. Let's say you, you read the whole. Um, yeah, I, I can be white. I mean, you're, 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 that you could explain it. And we'll do some of that a little bit later when we get to the, the link arguments. But I don't know. I, 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 would, I would say that there is, uh, you know, it's, it's possible. You know, I have seven ideas. No wrong answers. I'm just like it for ideas. Often this is kind of what happens in the 2AC. You hear a criticism, maybe not expecting. It's like, uh, okay, how do we explain a permutation? I don't know. I, I, I would say that you know, a lot of those people want to see is actually saying that arms sales are a way that the United States is trying to secure against China. Maybe that's an act of securitization. Maybe the maybe affirmative can be a move away from that. Maybe the, uh, the a permutation could be to do the plan to end arms sales to Taiwan and questioning those assumptions about why we made arms sales in the first place. Why are we trying to arm Taiwan against uh, why like the Republic of China, Taiwan, against mainland China? Why are we trying to do that? Uh, and that you know that is kind of you know doing both, and maybe that's you know that certainly solves the affirmative, and maybe it you know resolves a little bit of those link arguments. Maybe if we don't sell arms to Taiwan, we're not really secure against in China anymore. We're not really um, seeing them as less than. We, they're not someone that we have to protect ourselves against. Um, so I, I think that might be one way to explain permutation. Obviously, sometimes it's much more complicated. Sometimes. Um, it's, you know, I think it's, I mean, that one's pretty simple, um, but it can be much more complicated. But that's also something you should probably think about before the tournament, so you don't have to, you know, on your feet, think about those things around, because it is hard. Um, and just kind of a reminder, here's also that legitimate permutations should be all of the plan and some part of the alternative. Some or all of the alternative, and, you know, technically it could be all of it. But, for example, the permutation cannot, uh, anything else, it cannot be do the plan, um, you know, teach you know, be really, really, really nice to China, and um, uh, I'm trying. You know, you, you can't add more things that weren't the alternative because that's the the alternative is not about being nice to China. It's about um, you know, rethinking assumptions. So you can't add things. That would be what kind of permutation would that be if you add things that aren't in the plan or the counter or the counter plan or alternative? No, I'll work here. Well, wait, so would that be an, like, Yes, 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 it would be an intrinsic permutation. So what if the, um, <coughs> what if someone made a permutation that was just, uh, permutation, do we should desecuritize our relationship with China? What kind of permutation would that be? Not intrinsic, what's the other kind? Severance. I heard that from somewhere. So yeah, that, that is correct. Severance. Uh, and you can't do that either. That's not really fair to the, the negative. That they the negative got links from me the you know from the affirmative approach of um, you know and things they've said in the one AC and you can't uh, sever out of those things, the negative would say. So the permutation kind of makes sense. It's very similar to the permutations on counter plans. And if you kind of get the basics of that, which is hard enough by itself sometimes, um, then I think this makes sense. But just like counterplans, you want to advance a permutation so that you can say that, hey, that this thing that you read, it's, it's, some, it's not mutually exclusive with the affirmative. It's something that can be included. We can you know, do something to resolve both these things. Why not both? Offense. Again, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. So for example, um, for this criticism, uh, you might read evidence against the criticisms like, Yes, we securitize China. Now, you know, you might deny that you're saying that they're uncivilized, but like you might read some evidence that hey, G is a threat. G, uh, you know, G is uh, like a, um, you know has a foreign policy that violence and that you know we need to you know, protect ourselves against. Um, that you know, that's probably the best you know, version of that in this case is to you know, try to prove that the threats that the negative says are kind of constructive threats are actually real threats that need to be stopped. That they're important. Uh, if the criticism was about capitalism and said that you know the affirmative upholds market ideologies, neoliberalism, the affirmative might say, "Yep, we do. That's good." Uh, you know, the capitalism solves war. If capitalism, um, you know, whatever you know, uh, either, uh, space exploration, something uh, like that. You can read offense. That's based on the link argument. It's like, yes, we do link to your criticism, but that's a good thing. Uh, so that's another option. And um, 
that's you know, something else that's probably a good idea to try to put into the 2HC if possible. Obviously, there's sometimes um, that it's, it's a little bit harder based on what the link is. But again, those are special cases, and you can talk about that with your coaches or lab leaders. Uh, yes, solvency. Uh, does the alternative result to affirmative harms? So, uh, for the security case, um, can anyone think of you know, an answer to this question, yes or no? Uh, does kind of questioning the assumptions of security, how, what does that do about arms sales? Yeah, no, no wrong answers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was like, the, 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 the advantage, you could like say, the neck could like say, like the old actually started in relation since we're, we're questioning why we see China as a threat, so that might improve relations with China. Yeah. So would solve that advantage. Yeah, no, I, that, if I was negative, that's what I would say. I would say that it does. Uh, now, if I were affirmative, and that's, that's what we're talking about here, I would say, okay, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good spin, but where's the evidence? We read evidence from the one you see that ending arms sales is key to solve relations. That's a pretty good spin that you just gave, but you have to have evidence that says that you solve our impact. Our impact's gonna happen now, but it's really, you know, I wanna emphasize it's a short time frame for our impact. If you don't do something about arms sales, this is gonna be a conflict. We can rethink all we want, but if you don't resolve this short-term problem, doesn't solve. So that's an argument that the affirmative should be making that it doesn't solve the uh, harms that everyone wants to see. Does that make sense to everyone? It's kind of like you, you know, against a um, you know against a counterpoint you can solve the opposite same thing. Uh, theory and framework. There are two parts to this. Um, uh, you can make theoretical objections to the specific K alternative. Maybe it's a little bit vague. Maybe it's just like, you know, uh, this one is you know a little bit more explicit than others. But maybe um, the you know the alternative is to do nothing. Sometimes you, you might hear that like the alternative is to do nothing in the face of the ass impacts. And then like in the in the blog, the name's like, well, it's not literally do nothing. It's you know it, we we mean do nothing, and that's like a stance that you know, sends a signal, blah blah blah. Uh, so that's kind of shenanigans. And maybe you should call them out on that uh, in the 2AC and say, hey, if they try to make this into something else later, you should let us answer that because they don't really mean to do nothing. Or if rethink security, something like that, transforms in the negative block to mean, oh yeah, we might get rid of arm sales too. Uh, yeah, you should, you know, no, that's shenanigans. You can't do that. That's cheating. Um, you can't steal our affirmative like that. Uh, something like that is called a floating pick. You may have heard that term before. Um, you know, it's uh, a PIC PIC is a plan inclusive counter plan where the counter plan includes part of part or all of the affirmative. Uh, the a plan a PIK a floating PIC PIC is a plan inclusive critique where the critique alternative kind of morphs to just like steal the plan and say, oh yeah, sure, the, the, the alternative might result in the plan. And I think if you're affirmative, you can kind of you know, figure out why that might be bad for you. If the native can say it, then not only do they do this, they also do the, they also eventually solve the app because they eventually do the plan. That's kind of a problem. Uh, so you can make theory arguments about that. The other thing you should definitely do, and this is that if you're using like the F postal uh, uh, structure, uh, F is for framework. Uh, so framework is a kind of a question about what the focus of the debate should be. So uh, if you're reading this Taiwan affirmative, you probably want the focus of the debate not to be on your assumptions about China. You probably want it to be on whether or not the plan is a good idea, whether or not the result of the plan is a good idea. Yeah, maybe some of the things we assume about China are wrong. Maybe some of it, you know, it, it could even be um, a little bit, you know, offensive to the Chinese people. But if they have stopped the nuclear war, maybe that's more important. Uh, if, you know, the, you should focus on the results of the plan, uh, not you know, not only the assumptions of them. So that's the argument the affirmative should make too. Again, I, that could be a whole lecture in, the, in and of itself is about how the affirmative can make these arguments. That sounds like a good subject for an after lab. Maybe you should request that some that someone do. Uh, but that that's just like a you know, I I, I, I can certainly answer questions about that. But that's a whole lecture in and of itself. And basically, we can talk about it in the lab. 
uh, or um, you know, go more in depth on later. I have a little time for questions after, but I want to make sure we get to everyone. Um, but any like basic you know, questions about that, basically. Okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, for alternative. Uh, does the alternative resolve the links and implications of the links that the negative has outlined? Um, so the uh, this is kind of similar to the solvency thing, except it's not does the uh, alternative solve the app, it's the, does the alternative solve what they try to solve? Does rethinking the ontological assumptions of security actually do anything about the ways that uh, the, the United States acts as exceptionalist or the way the United States uh, constructs China as a threat? I can think of some reasons I'd say no. Uh, if, the, if the actor of the alternative is maybe is the, uh, the judge or the bears in the round, uh, we can kind of rethink all we want about those assumptions, but it's likely that Trump is still going to think that uh, we're in a trade war with China, that we need to win that trade war because they're stealing our drugs, um, and that there's someone, you know, that's an entity that uh, we need to you know, beat, we need to win against. Uh, so uh, I kind of question whether or not the alternative alone is able to solve these things. Um, so I, I certainly would be making uh, I certainly would be making an argument that the alternative is uh, not, you know, not likely to solve those things. Similar to the question. I don't know if you're hearing that. Um, uh, kind of the picture here on the left is of. Uh, former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, um, uh, a famous quote of hers, uh, kind of talking about the, the capitalism, how to want your neoliberalism, just like the kind of global integration and free markets. There's kind of I mean, there's no alternative to those things. Um, it was kind of a you know, big thing in the, in the 80s when she was Prime Minister uh, in the UK, Reagan was president here, um, about you know, deregulation. And um, just like the expansion of free markets was the uh, was kind of the focus, and that was kind of the mantra that was put up as uh, to answer kind of the criticisms of uh, capitalism that were levied against um, policies either here in the United States uh, or just in the United Kingdom or just around the world. There's no alternative. Now, uh, you know, the response to that is that okay, but that is you know they may have to try something because. <coughs> um, there, you know, that's kind of the assumption that there's an alternative relies on uh, uh, of those on a lot of different assumptions of, the, of its own, like that that, that um, mar the market is a natural process that it's, it doesn't cause uh, doesn't have structural failings that it doesn't cause violence. Um, so uh, the negative certainly can respond to that, uh, but yeah, you, you might. Um, want to make the arguments that the alternative is unlikely to solve because there is no alternative, maybe in this case, to constructing China as a threat or to capitalism or whatever is being criticized. Um, and finally, uh, the link. Does the affirmative actually link the critique? So usually, uh, hopefully, um, just because you want to, you know, as a judge, I want to see good debates, the negative type of critique that does link it, you know, it does link. Um, if you're affirmative, of course, you hope that you, um, it doesn't, but uh, maybe, you know, if you go to uh, the first term of the year and are reading an affirmative about Saudi Arabia and the negative um, just pulls out the cam packet critique and reads this trying to criticism, it might literally not link. Um, it, I, 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 it might be uh, legitimate for you to say, no link. Um, we are not talking about China at all. Uh, what are you doing? You messed up. Uh, you, you, know, you should read a, a better link before, and, or you know, but there's really nothing for us to answer. You still want to make the other arguments. You still, because they could read new links in the blog. You still want to make the premium. You still want to uh, you know, potentially you know, preempt some of the, you know, how they could morph the alternative, maybe make some framework arguments, a theory argument. But if it doesn't link, it doesn't link, and you can say that. Um, this is also where I would make arguments that uh, I was talking about earlier, that maybe the plan is, isn't constructing China as a threat. Maybe it's moving away from constructing China as a threat. 
because it's literally disarming Taiwan, and Taiwan is by seen by China as a puppet state of the United States to try to uh, undermine China. So maybe the plan is to move away from that. Uh, so maybe it links a little bit, but it also might link, you know, might be a link turn. So that's another argument that I think is important uh, for the affirmative to make when it applies. Now, sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes the link to the criticism might be as simple as, um, uh, like, you know, let's say you read uh, an advantage about how, um, I don't know, oh, let's say the, the, the Taiwan democracy impacts. Maybe they, they read the negative rates of criticism about why expanding democracy is violent. Well, you can't say no link, no expand democracy. The, the, that's not that the effect of the plan by itself. It, the only, it's not the assumption of the plan. It's literally what the plan does. So you shouldn't make a no link argument like that. But if it doesn't link, it doesn't link, and you can say so. Uh, don't let the negative get away with just, you know, not even making a link argument, just kind of assuming there is one. Uh, point out that there is not a link uh, to the argument they're making, just like anything else. Just like they read a T argument that um, just like, you know, doesn't apply to uh, your part of the you know, the part of the resolution that you're defending. Just, you know, say it doesn't matter. Um, does that, uh, yeah. Does uh, the affirmative, you know, end of things? Any questions about that? There, about any of like the postal, F postal. That's a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a lot there. Um, does anyone have a question about that? Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. And keep going. That's kind of you know, For a lot of you, that may have been review, and it may have been a long review, but these are these comp these conflicts are complex and it's worth going over again. And maybe you, you, even if you had uh, done some of this before, just reinforcing things that made sense to you. Uh, that didn't make sense to you before. Okay, so critiques on this topic. Uh, there's a wide range. Of course, there are critiques that you might hear on any topic. Uh, you might, you know, the people who read critiques about like French philosophers, uh, or you know, I guess you know. Uh, they're still, they were still French philosophers, but, you know, uh, dead French philosophers, you know, Baudrillard, um, you know, Deleuze and Guattari, uh, uh, those things are certainly on every topic, and I'm not, I, I don't have a slide about those, and just because I don't have a slide about those authors does not mean that they are not, you're not hidden on this topic. I just think the link is not very specific to this topic. Um, that's also not exactly my cup of tea, maybe I'm totally missing the connection, um, but that's just like, uh, kind of a high theory philosopher, you know, like they may have a different way of approaching uh, the world, and the world includes arms sales. So uh, certainly you might hear some things like that. All the affirmative answers certainly apply to that, and all the net things the negative uh, does when reading those criticisms also apply. But if you have questions about that, again, that's a great after lab suggestion. I'm not sure if we'll get to all of those while you're here, but that's a great thing maybe to ask your coaches about, ask your lab leaders about, um, you know, like after, even after camp, because uh, it's probably not going to come up at this camp, but um, definitely good things to know about. So um, uh, international relations critiques are kind of one variety of critique, and the examples that I have right there are even like a small, small part of a uh, wide variety of international relations critiques. So the first one, and the one that you're probably most familiar with, is the security criticism we've been talking about. That's kind of our critique of how <coughs> international relations operate. Um, again, the discussions of international relations theory and realism and liberalism, uh, that could fill a semester of a college class, let alone an hour and a half critique seminar. So again, that's something that you should um, ask about maybe uh, questions at the end, or uh, ask your lab leaders, or um, you know, uh, do some research on your own, you know, Wikipedia even, uh, get some idea of some terms. But uh, the security criticism is basically the idea that the threats that the affirmative is talking about are constructed. They are not objective things. They are things that the affirmative is kind of hyping up uh, to win. So the, the critique in the packet is certainly an example of that. Um, and it's a pretty good example of that. Uh, even, it's even specific kind of to the affirmative that is in the packet, Taiwan affirmative, for good links to China.
Uh, the second example I have here uh, is something you might have heard like the feminism or fem IR critique or the gender IR critique. Um, it's probably more accurate to say gender because it's not just about, um, you know, feminism might imply that it's, uh, you know, a more limited scope, but it's really just about uh, gender and international relations. Um, the picture here is some of uh, uh, Professor uh, J. Ann Tickner, who wrote one of the seminal works on uh, gender uh, international relations criticisms in 1992. Uh, um, I, I didn't have the number on that is the name of the book, uh, Gender and International Relations. Um, if you are using some of the strategies that Bruce talked about in that research lecture, uh, I bet he talked about Google Scholar, um, I bet he talked about looking at articles that cite um, uh, other articles. If you were to type in gender and international relations, Tickner, in Google Scholar, it would, that would come up and it would say, you know, cited by, and then a huge number of articles because it is the work that kind of set the foundation, a lot of it anyway, for that, um, for the, that theory. So, uh, for example, gender international relations studies says that um, you, you have to use uh, a gendered lens to understand international relations, that, uh, that uh, power dynamics between gender uh, are what determine a lot of the things that uh, we see as neutral. Like, you know, when there's a war, it's not just because both sides want to, you know, one side wanted power of the other. It's about hyper-masculinity. It's about uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, that war is kind of a masculine idea of, of trying to gain power that it's tied into gender, that's a very simple explanation for it. Again, this is the kind of thing that you take, I've, I've already, I've taken college classes on this. Uh, so it is certainly more complicated than that, but I encourage you to read more about this. Um, and there are a lot of other authors that have built on this theory. Uh, I would, you know, I'm not sure if the camp is putting out a file like this, but I know other camps this year have. So, excuse me, I guarantee this will be a criticism that you will see um, posted online from other camps, if not by this one. Um, and I think definitely applies to arm sales. There are um, uh, people who talk specifically about kind of about arms and about missiles um, as, uh, I, I think you can imagine what, uh, what people might say they're a metaphor for, it's about masculinity. Um, they say, you know, uh, oh, we have to have the biggest missiles. Uh, I, I, meant, to, I meant to put the, uh, the screenshot of the Trump quote it talks about how he has a bigger, bigger missile than uh, Kim Jong Un. Uh, yeah, it's like not very subtle. Um, but the uh, this is something that the international relations um, yeah, studies in gender might talk about, and it's something yeah, for sure you hear about. There are a ton more of uh, brands of international relations criticism. It's just a couple of them. Again, lot to cover. Uh, Economics and capitalism critiques. Again, this is on every topic, but I think that there's a pretty good topic-specific link based on uh, military-industrial complex, which is the same, you know, another way of saying the defense-industrial base. Obviously, that's something that's being raised at a disadvantage, but um, the, it's also I mean, it's kind of relevant to, you know, as a criticism that uh, the affirmative points to the selling of a particular kind of arms. Uh, or you know, selling to a certain, a certain country as the problem, but really the problem is that the United States is subsidizing the military-industrial complex by selling arms to companies around the world. So that's the real problem. They're misidentifying the problem, and therefore we should focus on uh, you know solving things of level of class conflict, or we should try to resolve the military-industrial complex. Some of these criticisms, uh, the alternative kind of might sound more like a policy sometimes. I've heard very successful teams make the alternative something like pretty concrete, like uh, you know some form of socialism or some um, you know even it's like a revolution, like a revolution that like kind of has a blueprint for how it would work. So it, it, sometimes those alternatives sound a little, a little bit like uh, more like a counter plan, but uh, the alternative would be something that would be maybe not Marxist. That's Marx in the last few. Uh, realize that, um, uh, but you know that is um, you know you know a, a approach that people definitely take in this topic. The links are good. Uh, they'll read that. Uh, on the right, I think is 
a relevant quote from uh, former President Eisenhower, also former General Eisenhower, um, that I think is kind of telling, um, and I think is a good one to, uh, you know, some of the articles you might, re uh, might read on a cheek like this might reference this uh, speech that Eisenhower gave uh, right before he uh, left the presidency on, <coughs> or and actually after winning the presidency, but it doesn't matter, about the military industrial complex. And it's kind of telling that he was like <laughs> the general, like the hero of World War II, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and, and after, he, that's, and he became president. And then the way he spoke about the military industrial complex uh, is this, I'll read it aloud, so it, some, it's kind of small at the bottom. Every gun that is made, every warship launched, every rocket fired signifies, in the final sense, a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not clothed. This world in arms is not spending money alone, it is spending the sweat of laborers, the genius of its scientists, and the hopes of its children. Says, that sounds like, yeah, that sounds like, uh, more like Marx, that sounds like a president, let alone like a general. But yeah, that is like, that's pretty, I don't know, that's pretty woke for uh, someone who's like, led the US military. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think that is um, certainly something that's kind of relevant when you're thinking about uh, arms sales, are why are we doing this, and are we really attacking the, the main problem when we think about arms sales? Oh. Are there any specific links to the topic of the economic and capitalism? Yeah. Piece? Sure. Often there aren't. I mean, like, some topics there certainly aren't. There are in this one, though. Yeah, this kind of goes back to what I was saying before about misidentifying the problem. You may have heard like uh, the term whitewashing before. You ever heard that term before? What, yeah, some kind of definition of that. Someone else over here on the side of the room. Whitewashing. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Isn't it like sort of making culture more like white centric? Uh, I mean, like, it, sometimes it literally does mean, like, uh, white, but... but. Uh, it's kind of like misappropriating, like, different cultures by using, like, a white lens, almost. No, like, I mean, that, that's, uh, like, a too... Sometimes, that, it isn't necessarily wrong, but it's uh, too literal in this sense. Offer. Like, an example would be, like, replacing of, like, actors, or, like, for, like, roles that are traditionally, like, uh, like, uh, like, a certain ethnicity, replacing it with, like, uh, um, like just like white actors and kind of feel like the example that we're facing. Okay, so like, yeah, again, that, that is an example, a good example of whitewashing, but I, that's, again, a bit too literal. Um, whitewashing is kind of um, like the literal process of it is kind of making something look good that is bad. That is, that is, uh, that is like, like my car, um, this is actually a true fact, um, like the bumper's all broken, um, like it needs to be fixed and take it in uh, to the shop. But I could get a, go get a car wash, my car would look pretty good, but you wouldn't, like, unless you looked at the bumper and it's all messed up, and, like, if there are other repairs, I need to get an oil change. But I can make it look really shiny, and it looks really nice, and it might distract from the fact that there, there's things wrong with it. So, uh, you're trying to link to this topic. So, uh, the AFT is an example of uh, getting one, rid of one part of the military industrial complex that kind of distracts from the fact that it's a bigger problem, it's a bigger thing. That, that you are just like doing it like tiny like tweezers, um, you know, getting rid of one tiny thing and not attacking the big thing. It's kind of like if you're gonna have a brain aneurysm and like your head starts to hurt, like okay, I'll take the Tylenol. Okay, you might make the like the headache go away, but the bigger problem you've actually just masked. So those are the kind of links. That's how I kind of spin a link to this topic. And I know there are, there's evidence about capitalism and about this topic, but does that kind of make sense? Yeah. But wouldn't that be super susceptible to like a permutation? Yes. Yes, but I mean, like that, that, I'm saying, I, 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 I'm talking about an egg hat. Yes. But on my app hat? Yes. I think I would make a permutation with that. But that's still a link. I mean, it's still something that the affirmative does that, you know, that might not be worth uh, what it solves. If, 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 it caused, if it masks the bigger problems in the military industrial complex, maybe it's not worth solving this immediate crisis if it makes militarism or uh, like the worst parts of capitalism uh, worse. So I think that's how I would kind of explain a lot on this topic. But uh, there's certainly evidence that these things have been um, So yeah, another you know, brand to think of critique 
is uh, what you might have heard before, or you might see in file four, is uh, the global local um, distinction, uh, or you know, you might think like the, the war at home. So um, in, in this, and this is part of the affirmative that our lab is working on. That if you're in NMS lab, I think we're going to introduce uh, this evening um, is kind of the connections between the way that the United States sells arms to countries that specifically. Um, you know, I think, I think it kind of focuses on the Israel-Palestine uh, conflicts, but um, how that, that process mirrors what happens in the United States internally, where the U.S. Uh, military uh, will sell excess uh, equipment to local police forces. Um, it get, you know, the big example that's given is in uh, Ferguson, uh, which is uh, part of uh, the St. Louis County, um, and on the right, you can see some of the um, police in uh, St. Louis who are equipped with weapons that certainly look more like weapons of war than weapons of, uh, like, you know, police, uh, you know, keeping, keeping the peace in a local area. Um, and uh, there's a, a big discussion about whether or not, okay, like, yeah, sure, we can talk about us selling arms to other, other countries' militaries, but maybe we should focus on the more direct uh, in, you know, what's happening right in front of us, where these weapons are not just being sold around the globe, they're being sold uh, in, in neighborhoods uh, to uh, do violence. And, you know, that violence uh, could be generalized, generally it could also be uh, made more specific, that it's uh, often violence against people of color, um, and the, the violence that, kind of, that goes along with that. Uh, so that, I think, is a, will be a critique that um, I would certainly imagine here You'll, you'll probably hear about it uh, in relation to the affirmative that we're working on, um, but uh, that is certainly something. Uh, on the left is uh, Professor Dylan Rodriguez, who I think writes, um, uh, this is a journal article uh, from 2009 that I think uh, approaches this issue uh, and explains it pretty well. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's the terms of engagement, warfare, white locality, and abolition. Uh, I kind of talked about how <clears throat> we need to abolish violence in general, not just uh, like abroad. We should also focus on violence that we see in front of us, not just the violence that happens in other countries. Um, and uh, that's, I mean, that article isn't about Ferguson because that Ferguson happened after that. But that's just, Ferguson's just an example uh, of something that happened around the time of that recently, it was a few years ago now. Um, but it, it's, it's something that happens again and again. It certainly is not like gone away. Uh, so. Um, that is something that uh, I imagine we hear critiques about. Um, maybe not just about specifically about police violence, but also um, other kinds of war that are not just the, like a literal war between two countries. Um, there's you know wars against the environment. There's wars against other uh, against populations um, that I think that you'll hear about too. Um, another an article kind of does that makes a similar argument about the environment that Rodriguez does about um, uh, warfare is uh, Chris Cuomo, uh, an article from 1996, I believe, um, about uh, the you know, militarized uh, way of thinking and how that spills over not just in literal wars um, that are events between two countries, but they're also between uh, the military and, its pe and the people that it, so, you know, it's supposed to protect and against the environment. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, you know, criticisms that will be like that. I uh, don't have any questions about those kind of criticisms. Um, I think those will be a, kind of a, a popular um, way of uh, making kind of specific link arguments to arguments I'm actually going to get to on, on the next slide. But um, certainly, the in terms of it's the, you know we're talking about Ferguson talking about um, exporting weapons to uh, police. I mean that's certainly can link into your arguments about identity um, as well. I, I, I don't want to uh, steal too much thunder from that. One, because I hear that the after lab you had last night, and that was pretty informative already about anti-blackness, but also because uh, B and Allegro are going to give a whole lecture on identity criticisms on this topic next week, and I do not want to like preempt that uh, by going into it. They're going to do a really good job, I'm sure of it, so I don't want to steal any of that thunder. Um, but yeah, that is... Uh, Way of kind of you know, getting to those arguments, um, but yeah, that makes sense to everyone. No question or 
Okay. Um, again, I, I know it's a little last slide because I, I want to make sure, you know, I, if I didn't get to it, there's going to be like a lecture that's longer than this one, I think, that is just about this. Um, I could, you know, there are a lot of people put here. When, when people think of identity criticisms, they might just think of anti-blackness, and when they think of anti-blackness, they might just think of anti-pessimism. Uh, so I, I did this little bit, and I kind of did exactly that one thing I was trying to make a point of, against, is that it's not one thing where you see identity criticisms, it does not just mean anti-blackness, that does not just mean Afro-pessimism, it does not mean just Wilderson and Warren. Um, there's a, a large variety of arguments that have, you know, sometimes that have ties to the topic, some might have ties to just to debate, uh, but it, it certainly will be part of the topic. Uh, and uh, be like I said, being a Lakero will get more into that next week. Um, are there any questions about that? I, 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 again, I'm going to punt a lot of those uh, questions to them uh, so they can, because uh, they're, you know, we're going to have a pair of lock for that. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, again, something else that I think they're going to talk about that I wanted to, um, again, this could be a much longer seminar than this one just by itself, are affirmatives that take a critical approach. So all the things we've talked about before, all these critical structures, are things that sometimes, um, you know, they kind of going against the basic traditions of, uh, of you know, kind of like stock issues and what the affirmative is supposed to do. Sometimes the affirmative will decide not to read a traditional plan and say, and they will say that for a variety of reasons, our approach should not be starting with policy, saying a lot of the same things you'd say in an alternative, and instead of making that alternative the negative reads. I think that the advocacy of the affirmative reads in, instead of a plan. Uh, you know, again, this the whole topic on like the legitimacy of that. I'm again, that's that's like that I, I can't spend uh, an hour and a half lecture and cover all of the framework and all of that and all this other, all this other stuff. So uh, if you have questions about that, talk about it in lab, talk about it um, in, in after lab maybe. Um, I would be surprised actually if there was an after lab about framework um, in the works. Uh, so that's the whole other thing, but you should be aware of that too, that um, affirmative, that some of these can be affirmative approaches too, but they're not just negative approaches that respond to a policy affirmative, they are approaches that the affirmative might take uh, to talk about the topic, and they might use some of these justifications uh, as they, hey, like these are important parts of uh, literature, so we should not, you know, we, we shouldn't have to see these things on the negative, we should be able to say that this is a better approach than making policy arguments, and, um, that's, some, again, something you should be aware of. Um, some of them might be, be about arm sales. Some of them might be about, um, you know, more international relations a little bit more generally. Some of them might be about uh, debate, the, uh, the, the activity uh, that is, you know, you know, you know not, not necessarily about international relations. Uh, but the, 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 I think a lot of them can use the concepts I've talked about, uh, like the top specific ones. And I'd be very surprised if you didn't hear many of those. Uh, throughout the year, or even if not in your circuit, even if not you know, the teams that you're debating, it's happening in, in, in the country, I guarantee it, um, 100%. Um, and, uh, yeah, but you can put here, again, uh, the green stuff. This could be a seminar all by itself. Uh, yep. So, uh, reducing the military spending budget in order to provide for other departments of the government could be like a critical ask? Maybe, yeah. Um, yeah, that, 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 yeah, that's kind of one that, like, it, it, it kind of defends a policy but maybe one that's you know, kind of on the margins of, um, of you know, top Kelly. Uh, you know, if I was, you know, thinking of the, the T seminar that some of you heard uh, the other night, because I did, did the T seminar for uh, the other lab, for not, not for my lab, but for the other lab, like, you know, I, I have some definitions I certainly would, might say, like, yeah, that's not really topical, but you can kind of use um, the education and why it's beneficial to talk about um, why uh, the money should be spent elsewhere, maybe to justify um, not being absolutely topical, uh, and why it's educational to do that. Um, and there's probably a creative way you could word that too, to make it a little bit more topical maybe, or, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. But yeah, certainly that, that, that could be an example. It, you know, anything could be an example, because uh, as, as I said, part of the idea is that it's um, you know, not, I mean, like sometimes the approach is, on purpose, not topical. That is, like, the idea is that the resolution is uh, construction in a way that the uh, firm is not able to be topical. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I
So yeah, so I think that's uh, certainly a good example. Any other questions about that? That I mean, this is the, probably the most complex of any of the things I've talked about. Um, so, uh, and I, I don't want to skirt any questions about it. But I'm just saying that, like, I, this deserves more time than I'm going to have to do it right now. Um, any questions about that? I was still just tired. It's 10 o'clock, so I do that thing. Um, yeah. Uh, so, as I said, it's a brief summary. Um, uh, I meant to kind of say, it, like, cr criticism um, is like a, you know, you know, to critique something is a, is a, you know, is a verb. So it's like, it's, it's a process, but with the theme of the post that both critique is a slow process, but also uh, learning debate is a slow process. So um, uh, the, the, this, this, the, this quote at the bottom, this image, certainly applies to that as well. So don't give up on learning about this. Don't give up uh, just because some of it seems complicated. Uh, ask questions, you'll make sense, I promise. Um, even though some of these things, it might seem like you're just like totally lost, uh, you will eventually get in. Um, some of you are just learning to, like debate, period, or you know, certainly you're learning policy debate, and, but then these things, these things take time, but I think these are, um, understanding a lot of these theories behind this are um, sometimes more applicable to everyday life than um, some other things you learn, and certainly equally as applicable. Um, now, maybe not for poetry right stuff, I don't know, I have a particular hatred for poetry right um, <laughs> but uh, I definitely it's something I talked about, um, but uh, that's what I'm going to bring up, uh, uh, some of that like, weird French uh, high theory. Um, uh, yeah, so um, that is that. Any, yeah. you have any questions? That's all I got. The folks in the, uh, uh, the lab with me, Bruce, Sarah and Milan should stay here for a minute. We're going to move into something else, a cross-examination and, and an exercise with that. Um, but I, I need to see if we can just stay in this building by moving into the area under the stairwell, okay? I know there are a couple people who are next door, maybe as many as four, so I'm going to have to pull them out too, okay? But let me check. Um, yeah, I know that I, I asked if our lab could do that too. Uh, I, I know that if this room, HSS is going to be used when we're done. Okay. At, sorry, 1030 at the very least. Okay. Um, but uh, I was going to you know, do the same thing and see if we could hang around here. So probably for the next 30 minutes, you know, I one lab could be up in the stairs, one could be in here. Yeah. What if, I know the office told Bruce that the under the stairs in the first floor of Armstrong, the lounge is available. Yeah. But I know there are sometimes groups that are doing their own works and projects under the stairs. Um, and so I want to check. I was going to check a little later, like around 1020 or something like that. Okay. But let me check now. So stay here. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I just, yeah, yeah. Let's we'll, we'll, we'll stay here. Yeah. I, I told B that um, we probably, our lab would meet under the stairs. But, oh, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, but Bruce. Yeah, Bruce is holding that, so there's a little interference on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I asked off earlier, but it, it doesn't matter. We, we can go wherever. I just want to, um, it doesn't really make sense to go all the way back to the fourth floor for us. It certainly doesn't make sense for you to go after well. Um, okay, but while we're doing that, just any other key questions, Let not what I covered, those things I didn't cover? Okay. Yeah, I, I was kind of joking on the high theory stuff. So I can't answer questions about that. Um, but do you have any questions about critiques? Things you're always wondering, questions, concerns. So you're just so like you're all be perfect at reading critiques at, at the tournament, right? Because you got no questions. Great. I'm excited.